Hello, welcome to Stello's Rap. Oh, oh, straight, straight through. through! Bank, take advantage of it. Oh, oh, stand man. and applaud! It's a stupid question. <laughs> it's I, not! I have far greater expectations of you than that. Oh, yes! He's gone all the way! Now, he's popular, he's a great leader, he's the mentality of this football team. Oh, and another one from Cleary! Well, it doesn't get much better, does it? Absolutely outstanding! Oh. And the finish is just as good! Hi there, welcome to Stello's Wrap for another week. We're a day late and we're back in the small studio because COVID's doing some wonderful things to everyone. Hello Pete, it seems like a while ago round 18 wrapped up, but uh, some interesting stories out of the weekend. Indeed Matt, and I'm just hopeful that when we walk out of here, if we disagree on anything, that you're not going to drag me down and tackle me to the ground on any <laughs> shape or, or yeah. form. Um, that was a weird one, wasn't right, it? Look, I wanted to shout just because I, I, I can't get enough of it, to be honest. I, Whoa! And, and now that we've had a little bit of time in between this incident, um, and the, the reasons have come out, and they've been rather diverse, a, a pat on the backside somewhere, Nick Meaney, a teammate had been fouled, um, <coughs> Cody Walker telling... Lachlan to go back to reserve grade. None of them have really cut the mustard for what I'm saying. I, I still can't get my head around it. Looks like WWE. Well, I'm j just, I don't know what Lachlan was going to get out of this. Like, what good could come in? Ultimately, with his side leading by two points, with the, the halftime sirens gone, they lead by two whilst he's in the bin, and he was always going to get sin bin. The look of surprise on his face, that blew me away. I <laughs> say, so, sir, what are you doing? They scored a try and, and kicked a penalty goal in there as well. So, you know, it cost his yeah. side. They'd worked so hard to get in front. We've got the team running last up against the team running third. Mm -hmm. To do that just made no sense. And unfortunately, since then, it hasn't made any sense in regards to the whys and the wherefores to it. And I just think it was really selfish mm. in regards to his teammates who'd worked so hard. It was just a, it was such a selfish play because nothing good was coming out of it. All right, let's uh, look at the on-field action. We'll start with the win by Parramatta over the Titans. Thought it was a danger game, actually, with Mitchell Moses ruled out on the 48-hour backup from Origin. But Parramatta gave them... Really, very little chance for, yeah, with a dominant first half. Junior Paulo missing as well, so both Origin players. And, um, you know, uh, I thought Dylan Brown really stood up in this game, uh, scored a great try first up, and, and I want to see more of that because there is a lot more to Dylan. And I thought the forwards aimed up as well. A guy like Oregon Cafusi got more game time in the absence of Junior Paulo, and that can only be a good thing. But the first half was brilliant. They were the, the completion rate was excellent. The second half, I thought, was very poor. Seven errors. They'd set the opposition up to get beaten in the second half, and as it turned out, they had they were outscored. So I thought it was a really poor second half. But what I did enjoy, especially in the first 40 minutes, was and I've been calling for it for a while. The support play coming out of their own end, in regards to not so much one-out football. Now, this is, the, this is the culmination of that. Have a look. It doesn't get any better than that. There are four support players to the man who's made the break. And that was on the back of the good work coming out of their own end where there weren't gang tackles, um, there, there weren't slow play the balls because there was formation both sides and it made the defence have to stand back and, and have a look. Well, it could go that way, it could go that way. There's a support play. Nathan Brown was very, very good in that regard, looming up on the outside. Not getting the ball, but his very presence takes pressure off the ball carrier. And I thought Parramatta were really good with that in the first 40 minutes. Yeah. Um, what do you want to talk about with the scrum, trapping the ball at the base of the scrum? You're keen on this play. You've been, you've been talking well, about I, this for a few weeks. Well, it's in retaliation to the trapping of the football, which first time I saw that was Melbourne a couple of seasons ago. Yep. Now everybody is, is doing it. And if the, the ball is going to be held in the second row, as it so often is, the opposing team then should have the, the right to push. Uh, Phil Gould came out with the, um, the statement that... Well, if you've got two minutes to go on the clock and you're leading and you're feeding the scrum, why wouldn't you just hold it in there as long as you can? Now, that's a, that's a ridiculous scenario, but, but not, the point that he's trying to make yeah. is that the ball can sit there as long as... So the defending team have every right to push in the scrum. Parramatta here, they kind of nullify it because they, they really make, a, um, make it easy for the referee to see that they got up, got up offside. 
Now, the Titans opted to go for another scrum, and here they put the, the push on, and it kind of helps them because it forces the opposition to, to play that little bit quicker. Mm. They can't stand there and try and establish an, an overlap. Mm. So I just think it's something that um, Parramatta showed on the weekend. We're starting to see it creep into the game a little bit more, and I'm not surprised that teams are doing it because they're getting caught out uh, by that ball being held there and, and the opposition having too much time to put together what they want to do. Friday night footy, Manly 32, Dragons 18, Dragons led at half time. Manly, though, uh, really crushed them in the second half and got back in the winner's circle after a surprise defeat to Canberra the week prior. Yeah, strong performance from Manly. We consider their three best players were out. Obviously, yeah. no Daly Cherry Evans and no Jake or Tom Trebojevic. So, in that regard, um, strong performance from them after that disappointing effort the week before. And kind of an embarrassment for, of Riches coming up for Des Hasler with his selection process. We've kind of gone through the forwards, um, all these young players they've got pushing for positions now, especially with Josh Schuster back mm. in, the, in, the, in the mix as well. But in the back line, when Tom comes back, he goes to fullback. Ruben Garrick, who is the leading point scorer and quite, by quite a margin, so that's a fair mm. effort for, for, for individually for him where the team is uh, on the ladder. Um, so he'll go back onto the wing. Now, Moses Suley has come back. He's had a checkered time over, well, certainly this season and, and last season as well. Devastating on the weekend. Very much so. And he's looking fitter and he's looking right. back to that player who was like he was a regular starter mm. in the run on side. And there's going to be a decision made by Des as to which way he goes. I, I think I think Mo's, um, Harper is, mm. is fine on the other side. But Parker and Suley have both been selected on that left side with Gary back at fullback. And they've kind of swapped around. And even though Moses Suley has been named on the wing, he's probably played predominantly more centre. Now, Brad Parker's been in great touch as well. So I'll be very, very keen to see which way Des goes because one of these players doesn't go back to the bench. That spot is occupied by Dylan Walker. So someone is going to, to miss out. Um, he's explosive, this young man, Moses Suley, and, mm. and, has, and has looked really good the last week or two running into some condition after having quite a time on the sideline. This man here, Brad Parker, he's been tremendous for a long time now. So um, good luck, Des. As I say, I think um, the, other side, the other side is covered. Mm. So it will come down to one or the other to play left centre. Mm. Um, may well be Moses Suley down the track just because he offers that little bit more of it, an explosive quality about him. Rafa Kieran Foran too, he was terrific. Yeah, he was good. Weekend. Yeah, and you know, really good signs for them. Ola Kawatu was outstanding. Just uh, back the first time since round yeah. 11, was it? So, yes. Yeah. So, so, again, with, with no Trebojevic brothers and Cherry Evans, yeah, you know, it's there's a lot of confidence there in regard. You know, we we kept talking about how they how poorly they fared without those type of players. Well, their second half performance showed that they're a confident football team despite the fact the stars were missing. All right, speaking of stars missing, Mitchell Pearce missed out for Newcastle. Not sure if it would have mattered though. Forty eight to four, another storms rubbing. They just put they just run in cricket scores against teams that that are below them on the ladder. Yeah. Like, you know, the teams are competing for that. That bottom part of the eight and lower, Melbourne just touched them up. Well, the the games have been over for the last three weeks at half time. Yeah. They've put on a hundred points to nil yeah. in the last three first halves. So that takes a lot of pressure off the back up. That's why you can afford to that give Jerome Hughes a, a bit of an early mark um, and and other players. But again, speaking of selection. Um, decisions to be made. We just spoke about Manly. Well, Melbourne too. Ryan Pappenhausen is not far away. They haven't had a better performer than Nico Hines. Oh, yeah. So much so, Nico Hines was called into the New South Wales Origin squad for Game 3 uh, to reward what he has shown for a while now. So, uh, again, it's going to be very interesting to see which way Craig Bellamy will go because I do think that comes finals time. It's probably going to be Pappenhausen who will be the number one if he is fit and healthy. But a few games coming back from a long stint out on the bench are probably doing the world of I, good. I think he will come back and play a couple of games off the bench. Yeah. Um, and Nico will probably swap and go into that position um, as, as the, the run into the finals uh, progresses. Uh, but again, a lovely situation for them to be in, to be able to take a guy who's, who's been so fantastic mm. for them. Um, and to be able to, to put him on, on the bench. Harsh for Nico, um, but I think he understands the situation. 
But, you know, that's not a fate to complete either. If he keeps playing the way he is, you know, Pappenhausen's a pretty good 14 as well. I'm, I guess I'm predicting that maybe Pappenhausen on the bench for a couple of weeks mm. um, and Nico. Um, but, you know, that wouldn't be written in stone because... But Hines gives them that versatility on the bench too. Uh, well, to play it, anywhere. No, no, exactly. But, but, you know, Pappenhausen does also. I, I think we all thought that if he'd have been fit before this, pre, this last Origin series, that he was going to be the 14 for New South Wales. Yeah. So he's, you know, he's got plenty to offer there as well. Yeah, true. Um, but again, Melbourne going along very, very nicely. Newcastle, uh, obviously when they lost Mitchell Pearce the day before with that hamstring strain, they lose Ponga during the course of the game and Clemmer. Um, but the damage was done in the first half and Newcastle really had no answers. Yeah, I think we've seen Newcastle with their best team are competitive, but when they lose a few of their bigger ones, they seem to struggle. Well, a point we'd made previous was that we would we hadn't seen the 1, 6, 7 and 9 yeah. on the field at the same time. And by that, I mean Ponga, Clifford, mm. Pearce and Braley. And again, they were without that last weekend. Yeah. Roosters 34, Cowboys 18. Tough year for the Roosters, Pete. They've been looking for someone to step up in those leadership roles with... Boy Cordner and Jake Friend going. Lost Brett Morris as well. And Angus Crichton is certainly obliged. I thought he was the best on the field. He didn't start the game. But when he came on, I thought that's when the Roosters really found more rhythm and, and looked more dangerous. Down that left side, you know, some, some great stuff. Some early touches from him. Uh, open space for not only himself, but the players around him. Uh, really good awareness. Spoken so much about the influence of, of Victor Radley in this football, time, football team. Well, I've got to put this guy in there as well. You know, he, um, I think he's playing the best football we've seen him play. He would have been in the Origin side first up if he'd have been available. And, um, you know, he came into the Origin team and did very, very well ag against Queensland. So quality player. And I, again, I just thought the fact that when he came off the bench, you could see the lift in the team mm. with his presence out there. A lot of good players around him. I think Hutchison's doing a great job at 5'8". Um, and... The, the you know Joey Manu is filling mm. in wherever and getting the job done. Walker was good when the game needed to be won. He made the right decisions. But to me, the standout was Crichton. Yeah. Sunday afternoon footy, a high-scoring shootout on a big Sunday of Rugby League Tigers. They're back in the winner's circle, 42 over the Broncos, 24. Defence took a back seat, but it was entertaining. It was good fun to watch. Uh, tit for tat, if you're the, either coach, probably not that... Um, ecstatic about what you were seeing when they didn't have the football, the respective teams. That's why we saw such a high-scoring affair. And again, the disappointment for Kevin Walters here is that when the game was there to be won, that they that they they blew, they blew it. And here's how close it was. Now Jordan Ricky, the 17, goes through and he takes out Luke Brooks. Now you know we we always look at these kind of things and say well sometimes it really does favor the attacking team too much i think they they get this one right you can see there ricky it's his responsibility mm. to avoid you know forget left shoulders forget running through the line he he runs into luke brooks takes him out of the play whether brooks would have been involved or not in in cover defense and being able to stop something again is questionable but the decision was right but from that the Tigers ran away with it in that last you know, 15 minutes. So, uh, yeah, real disappointment for um, for Kevin Walters. I, I like the performance of a couple of props here. I was talking about uh, the fact that Nico Hines was called up for New South Wales and put into that squad of elite players. Uh, Stefano Utakamano, um, mm. Parramatta player who was signed a, a, a year in advance by the Tigers because they saw what this young man had to offer. Um, and the fact that he was called into the Origin camp and around those kind of players will only do him good as well. Uh, but it, some really nice signs from on the weekend. Uh, you know, he's a big man and he's, he's got some ability with the football. I know this is just a kind of simple offload, but he attracts three defenders. Yeah. And that strips them of numbers and makes it easier for Leilua to score. And then late in the game, just to ice it, you know, the big man takes on Jake Clifford straight over the top. So some really nice things uh, from Otukamano mm. in, in that game. And you can see he's, he's a real prospect of the future. Uh, got a good motor, mm. plenty of size about him. And the fact he can use a football is great. And again, um, front rowers. Spoken about, not necessarily just front rowers, but guys who rely so much on their running ability. And I've mentioned Payne Haas. I've mentioned David Fafita, um, Jason Tamalolo. The more we see them use the football, the more their game will progress. And this instance here where you see Payne Haas play through the line 
attracts two defenders and gets the ball away. We see more of that. Payne Haas, who is he's a stellar front rower, but he will get so much better if he learns to pass before and after the line. I think the same applies to Tamalolo. I think the same mm. applies to David Fafida. You can't just run the football. It's admirable to watch and they are so difficult to contain, but imagine being able to to, to add a pass to their game, and that was a really good sign from Payne Haas there. Yeah. Uh, some transfer news doing the rounds, Pete, and it dovetails nicely with the Tigers. You're surprised about the rumours that Luke Brooks is being shopped around. The club's denied that, but as we know, with transfer rumours, where there's generally smoke, there's fire. Well, there's so a lot you, of... Uh, you surprised Jackson Hastings coming back to Australia to play with the Tigers next year, and Adam Dewey went back into the six on the weekend. Yeah, well. look, look, it's, you know, I, maybe their patience is obviously getting thin. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about West Tigers at the moment in regards to recruitment, who might be coming and, and who, who might not. Uh, Luke Brooks has been under pressure for a long, long time. Some of it has been warranted. You know, I think that he hasn't had the right people around him for you know, a, a, a fair part of that. Um, but if they don't think, if they can't see him in a in a in a photo on the wall of, of a team that plays finals football, then you, you you look elsewhere. I like him as a player. I still don't think he's necessarily been utilised properly, and I don't think the right people have been around him. I still think he's got, what is he, maybe 26 now. He's got a lot of first grade under his belt. Hasn't played finals football in his time there. So that's mm. it's a huge concern. So, uh, yeah. So you're not surprised? Um, no, I'm not, I'm not that surprised. For a team that's running where they are and the amount of talk about recruitment and possible replacements, no, I'm not surprised in that context. Where would Luke Brooks go? in terms of a club, to bring the best out in him? Uh, well, I, well, I don't. It's, it's, it go to what a club. sort of a club? Well, a club that's that's probably got the right mix around him in regards to the 5'8", the, the back of the scrum, uh, someone who's looking for a running halfback that's not necessarily an organising halfback, someone who uh, is, a, is a left foot kicker, which can complement someone who kicks to the right side as well. So there are a lot of components there, but mm. realistically it's about a club that has got the right people that he would fit into, but needs a, a, a number seven who's not going to be your organising half, probably first and foremost. He's a runner of the football. He's better when someone else calls the, the shots, and that's why Adam Dewey has been such a success mm. when he's played in the six jersey. That's a really interesting observation, and there's some other ones I want to get onto, but we've seen Michael Maguire so many times change his halves combination, and even, even back to previous Tigers coaches, to make Luke Brooks the one who's the main organiser. To hand, they've made change yeah, yeah. around giving Brooks control of the team. Are you saying that's not the right way to use him? No, I, well, I, I don't. I don't think it ever has been. I thought that he play, was playing well alongside Moses Embai just for those couple of weeks there because Moses was more that that player. Yeah. And Adam Dewey has shown the great thing about Adam Dewey is that he wants the football and he straightens the attack and he's prepared. He's a young player who's only going to grow more into the role. Now, we know what kind of player Luke Brooks is now. He's not going to change. You're mm. not going to change him because you'd be doing a disservice. Mm. Um, you wouldn't be getting... So in, in answer to your question, if a club is looking for a running halfback who is prepared to play second fiddle to another playmaker, he's your man. Mm. I don't know if there are clubs out there I haven't explored, but I still think he's a first grader and I still think his best football is yet to be. Could Anthony Milford end up at Parramatta? And if so, where does he play? Well, it's... It's interesting, isn't it, in regards to a short-term one we're talking here. We're only talking about to the end of the year. You'd get him for absolutely nothing. Um, there is a spot available in the roster. I can understand the mentality behind it because he is that X factor, if you want to say that. Um, would it impact the, the squad that have been together for so long and have done so well? Yeah, that would have to be a huge consideration because if you are to bring him onto the bench, someone has to miss out. Um, but I, I can I can see where the, the side is coming from. If they're looking just for that little bit of an of an extra uh, come finals time, someone who can win a game with a you know a, a brilliant piece of play, Milford can still do that. You know we haven't seen him at his best for 80 minutes every week in Brisbane for a long, long time. Mm. But you throw him off the bench against some tiring defence with basically no responsibilities apart from run the football and run into gaps and take advantage of what he sees in front of him yeah. for a a limited period of time, you know, there's an attraction there. But again, it impacts on the bench that they have had and everybody has really contributed off the bench. You don't want to put any unrest in the team. So um, you know, it was interesting, Clint Gutherson was, at, was uh, spoken to during the week and asked about this. He had no idea that the club were looking at him. 
um, he's the kind of player that should be consulted on those kind of things. But it's been a disrupted week as well. Yeah. Other games, Panthers 30, Warriors 16. Tight tussle this one on the uh, issue of recruitment and player transfers. Tavita Pangai won't be joining the Panthers. That's been put to bed this morning. That was another rumour doing the rounds. Raiders 34. We're talking Canterbury. Well, they're talking... They were talking Penrith till the end yeah, of the year. Yeah, and yeah. No, I know, I know what you're saying. Expected but it, to sign with Canterbury uh, on a longer-term deal yeah, today. which is interesting on the back of the Phil Gould um, yes. recruitment. Raiders 34, Sharks 18. Big game um, coming up on Thursday. Parramatta versus Canberra. Two in a row now for the Raiders and mm. um, Rabbitohs and the Dogs. We've already been through that with uh, Lachlan Lewis Pumpkin Award. Uh, you want to talk about Freddie? Great win for the Origin team. Yeah, obviously uh, post mortem from Origin is is quite old now. It's been a while, but um, yeah, I, I just want to give him another app, and I've given him plenty, and this will be the last one for the season because I don't want to. Uh, it's not a, a a love fest, but I just had a look um, through the coaches that have coached at, at this level, and they've they've been twenty seven in all, fifteen for New South Wales, twelve for Queensland. And having won, what, three of four series now, Brad Fittler actually sits behind Phil Gould as the most successful New South Wales origin coach uh, when it comes to series victories. And he now sits fifth overall, again, out of 27 coaches in regards to series one. And that's some pretty decent company, isn't it? Mm. Nine for Mel Meninga, six for Phil Gould, five Wayne Bennett, mm. four Arthur Beetson, Brad Fittler in three, and he's got the job again, at least for next season. Uh, so, yeah, congratulations to him. And uh, the thing I've really liked about Brad Fittler's coaching, apart from the way they've gone about uh, the selection of the team, it's the way that he's engaged the community in regards to making this team the team of the people. Mm. Now, that's a bit cliche, but, but it is. He's, it, he's made them very accessible. He's closed no media off. He's allowed the fans to see what they're all about. He's taken them out into the country areas. Um, mm. You know, they've done a whole lot of stuff in, 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 in you know, for, for homeless, for country mm. football, for all of those kind of things. He's made this team very easy for the New South Wales supporters to embrace mm. and feel a part of. And uh, I think that's been a huge part of his success, and I think that's why it's so well received. Uh, yes, it was disappointment in Game 3, but it's still been a long time since New South Wales have won two games in Queensland. Two games. Uh, couldn't win the third. Mm. And I still don't think enough um, enough respect has been given to Queensland in regards to how good they were in Game 3. I don't think that they've had enough plaudits for their performance. It's all been about how did New South Wales lose the unlosable. It was never that. Um, they didn't play as well as they did in the first two games. Queensland were much better. And uh, it still came down to a... You know, a late play that New South Wales still could have you know, grabbed uh, defeat, uh, grabbed victory right at the end, mm. weren't able to do so. But, um, yeah, I thought Queensland were very, very good in this game. I thought New South Wales were excellent in the series. And I thought, again, the coaching staff did a great job to secure that victory after the first two matches. All right, a lot of news coming out of the weekend. And we've got footy kicking off in 48 hours for round 19. Round 19? Gee, seven weeks to go, seven weeks to go, and that'll go quickly. So all of this, this log jam we keep talking about, uh, it's going to continue for a while yet, and we're going to have uh, we're going to have some teams that'll fall from from seventh to twelfth in one weekend. We'll have some go from thirteenth, and it'll be all over the place. But it'll be good fun. All right, we'll talk to you next week.